Hey there, YouTube. Lord Nikon coming back at you with another cringy intro for another amazing video. Hey there, YouTube. Lord Nikon coming back at you. Beep, 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 beep. Hey there, YouTube. Lord Nikon coming back at you with another cringy intro for another amazing video. And in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about streaming with AMD software. So with the AD, you know, AMD Adrenaline software, we're going to talk about how to set it up, you know, maybe making some scenes, connecting devices and accounts, getting it all set up and ready to go, and really who and why you would want to use this as a means to stream to Twitch or YouTube or what have you. So Without further ado, maybe we should get into it. But if you're going to like this content or if you want to discuss it more, you can join the Discord. It's a growing little baby community. It's just getting off the ground. I'm in there all the time. Or maybe you want to follow me on Twitter. You can do that too. But without further ado, let's get into it. Alrighty then. So here we are. Uh, the, a the AMD Adrenaline software. This is the home... And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to want to make some setup the, the software so we're ready to go streaming. So what we're going to do is go over to the cog wheel here and go to the general settings. And then we're going to pop on over to accounts. And then you're going to just go ahead and connect and authorize the accounts that you know, you're going to stream to. Twitch or YouTube, what have you. Um, if you don't have that, I believe we can do a custom key, but uh, we'll get into that in a little bit. But go here to the accounts. You're most likely going to be streaming to Twitch or YouTube, so just go ahead and connect those. Then we're going to pop over here to General, right? So we get over to General, and there's a few things here we want to make sure of. Uh, at this point, we will be coming back here in a little bit, though. So first thing is you go down here about midway, and you'll see Game Streaming. We're going to make sure that's turned on, obviously. And then if we go down a little bit further, the bottom left, you're going to see Live Streaming, right? So this is where we can set up of the uh the settings for streaming now let me preface this by saying that I'm, I'm basing these settings off of very basic hardware um all the way through you know my 3800x and 5700xt you want to you want to um limit the amount of resources that the drivers are using to stream so we're going to create a custom profile under resolution we're going to set that 720p because the vast majority of people watch streams on phones or maybe don't have great internet. So trying to pump out 1080p just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Plus 720p is gonna be a lot less resource intensive on your machine. Video bit rate, this is gonna kinda of determine, be determined by the level of uh, your internet speed. Um, so if you have really good internet, I would recommend no more than three megabytes per second. That's plenty for 720p, no matter how balls blazing fast your internet is really no point in going above that you can even trim it down to 2,500 um, or 2 to 2.5 megabits per second 2,500 kilobytes per second what have you um, but 3 megabytes if you have you know a, a pretty decent internet that should be good audio bitrate we can max that out here to 192 FPS we're going to limit it to 30 no point in going to 60 um, again same reason 30 frames per second versus 60 frames per second Unless you're streaming FPS games, like high fast uh, motion games, then you may want to maybe play with 60 frames per second, but let's just start with 30. And then archive stream, this is completely um, dependent on what you want to do. I would say don't archive it, because again, that just means it's going to be recording while it's streaming, and you can always re-download the VOD later if you need to. Um, so I would turn that off. All right, something else I uh, should mention here is when you're in your general settings here, you also need to set up your audio capture device and your video capture device. Audio capture being your microphone. It's the, it, the software is automatically going to pull any system sounds if you have music playing or the game playing. Um, but your audio capture device would be your camera or your microphone. And then video capture device, you just want to select your camera um, so that you know you have a camera there, obviously. And then when you go back into your streaming software, I mean the streaming settings over here, uh, it's going to have camera enabled or disabled. And that camera is the video device that you set up in 
these general in these general uh, settings here under media. Uh, so now you don't have any control over sizing of the camera as far as like cropping it down. Like so if it's a 16 by 9, it's just going to pull whatever the native resolution of the camera is. You don't really have any control over that, which is kind of a bummer, but you can still have your camera and it will work. So that's going to get us through the basic general settings to make sure that we're ready to stream. And then we're going to go over to up top here to the streaming tab, right? So this is where, you know, you kind of set up the stream where you get the preview of the stream and everything. The first box here is just where you, where you streaming to. And there you do, you can do a custom stream where you put your key in. If so, if you were in that account, if you set up the accounts, so maybe, you know, there was one there that you want to stream to that wasn't there. You can still stream to it with a custom stream setup. I'm just going to pick Twitch for this because I've already connected my Twitch account. Uh, you're going to select the server that's closest to you physically. Um, do you want to do full screen or do you want to capture a region of the screen? I would just do full screen. More on that a little bit later. Um, and then you have your go live button. But if we go down, we can uh, make sure your microphone is connected and the volume of the microphone. If you want push to talk, enabled or disabled, whether you want to enable or disable the camera, if you have a camera, record desktop. So I've tried this a few times with different games and it doesn't always hook the game even if it's full screen. So I would recommend just recording the desktop. It does put a little bit more load on the, the, the encoder and the GPU and everything, but you're, you'll be sure to be able to grab whatever game it is. And then you have your scenes down here. Right, so you can also look view your chat when you're live. You can view the chat there. Um, but if we go up here to scene editor, so you have, I have, you can see I have two scenes here, and we can create a new scene. Which I'll go ahead and create a new scene. So there, now we have three scenes. But if we go up here to the scene editor, okay, so you're kind of limited now. I mean, the mo more creative people of you out there may be able to do a lot more with this. I haven't spent a ton of time. I just wanted to get in there and understand how it worked and what you could and couldn't do. So if we go to the scene editor and we go to scene one, okay, you just see basically a bunch of nonsense here on the screen, right? And even though it says indicator on the left, camera, chat overlay, and if I click all these, it's, it's going to kind of show you where the camera is, where the chat overlay is, and this is for scene one. Now, I haven't found a great way to rename these scenes, like a starting scene or an ending scene or a game scene. It seems to always just default to scene one, scene two, scene three. So you'll kind of have to keep a mental note if you end up creating a bunch of scenes. But if I toggle off this custom overlay I have here, you can see kind of the layout, right? So my camera is going to be here. My chat is going to be on the screen here. The indicator is just how long you've been live. You can turn that on or off. Um, but this custom one is actually a, a camera frame that I pulled from my stream elements just to see if it would work. Um, and it does, by the way. So if I turn that back on, it just kind of, because my overlay is 1080, uh, 1920 by 1080, it's covering the whole screen. So in order to see what I'm working with as far as chat, where I'm placing the chat. So like if I go to the chat here, right, I can just move this wherever I want. And that is where it's going to display on the screen. You can even resize it, make it bigger, uh, make it bigger, smaller, what have you, move it around. And that's the same for camera, chat, and, uh, well, uh, camera and chat, basically. Um, so let me turn this back on, and then we'll go to scene two. We'll go to scene two, which is just my camera and chat. So like a, you know, an intermission or a just chatting uh, uh, frame or scene. So a pretty basic one. And then we have scene three, which is the one I created, which is just blank. There's nothing there, right? So this is how you can create different scenes and everything. Now, if you want to add a new element, right? So you just hit plus. You can add a browser source. You can add an image, a GIF, or a video directly into the, into the scene. Um, browser source, though, is kind of key because that's how a lot of alerts are done, like through stream elements and all that kind of stuff, is just through a browser source. So you could stack these browser sources, or if you're using stream elements, you can combine it all into one single browser source, which would be even better if you can. Um, and then you can get your camera overlay, you can have your alerts and everything, even though you're using, you know, you're not using OBS or any fancy streaming software. Um, so I just brought in that one browser source right here, which is my camera overlay. 
And I'll show you um, in one of the test recordings I did uh, with these settings, with that browser source, with that overlay and everything, how it looks. Now, mind you, I didn't um, really pixel perfect make the uh, camera fit with the uh, camera overlay. But if you took your time and kind of fiddle farted with it, you could get it perfect. So here's an example of what that looks like when you're streaming with it. All right, so here we are testing, uh, testing out the AMD, uh, streaming with AMD software. And uh, we're gonna drop into a game. I can switch my scene here with a hotkey. Uh, so I'm just chatting or whatever while we're loading into a screen. And then I can go back to the game and we're gonna see how this looks um, once uh, we drop in the game. We'll play a little bit and then uh, just see what kind of quality we get with streaming with this software. I will say this, I mean, the game is not impacted at all. The game looks just fine. Um, looks no different than if I wasn't streaming. So for me, playing the game, uh, you know, we're good to go. And I forgot I just used Fortnite, one of the most popular games on the planet. Uh, so I suspect there might be a lot of you out there that are wanting to stream your Fortnite gameplay. Uh, and maybe you just don't have a lot of knowledge with streaming or, you know, you don't want to get, you just want to start out, try it out, and you want to use software you already have. Um, so while I'm streaming here, I don't see my camera because I have that turned off. Um, in the preview, but I do see chat on the screen, which is nice because a lot of times, you, you know, if you have a single PC, I mean a single monitor, uh, it'd be hard to monitor chat. So it, the same way that it's displaying on the screen for you, it's displaying on the screen for me. So we're just going to drop down here, probably die real quick, just to uh, check out this software and see how it goes. And don't forget, guys, you can... Uh, Catch me streaming on Twitch every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you want to get more involved in a conversation, you can uh, catch me streaming on YouTube every other Tuesday. Which, you know, if that uh, turns out to get a lot more um, people wanting that or joining me when I stream, then uh, I might do that a little bit more often. We'll just pick up some cheeky little weapons, drop down here and hopefully find somebody to kill us but yeah the game looks pretty good wow are we all bots? So. Come on, let me get one of them. There we go. Oh. Anyway, this has been a test of the AMD broadcasting software. And then we just go back to full cam. Oh, we can go back to full cam, like so, and uh, forget that we just lost that round, and then we'll see how this goes. So let's go back into the uh, how-to video, the review. I don't know. Probably just cut all this shit out. All right, so you could tell 720p30. Now, obviously, you're viewing this in a YouTube video, not live, and you're re you're viewing the the VOD of the live stream. So. There's a lot of compression things happening and everything, but I will tell you this, it looked pretty good. I mean, when I was streaming with it, I was watching the live preview of not only in the software, but of my of this the Twitch stream, and it looked pretty daggone good. I mean, for for streaming basically just with the AD, AMD drivers, it looked really good. So we, we've touched on um, how to set up the live stream, how to edit the scenes, how to add uh, overlays and stuff to the street to the stream um, the other thing though that we're going to need to do is if you have multiple scenes which I'm, I'm certain you probably will is we're going to need to go run back here real quick to this settings and then hotkeys right so scene hotkeys see how we added that scene three and it says none there's no hotkey so if you have multiple 
monitors, then that's not a problem because you can just move your mouse over, click the scene you want to switch to, and you're good to go. But if you're doing this, if you're gaming and streaming with a single monitor, which I suspect anyone that's using this method to stream with is doing, you're going to need to set up some hotkeys um, so you can start and stop streaming, so you can switch your scenes around and stuff like that. It's just going to be a lot easier. So in order to create a hotkey, you basically just click in the box, press any key combination you want, and it'll record it, right? So here I have Control Shift F9, Control Shift F10. You could do Control Shift. Well, here we'll just do Control Shift F11. Boom, there you go, right? So now I can go scene one, two, three. Now along with this, I would also recommend the Elgato Stream Deck for mobile. So you can use your mobile phone or you know, uh, you know, iOS or Android doesn't matter. I don't think um, I'll put links to that in the description. So you can actually use that to enact these or control these hotkeys rather than actually hitting control shift blah blah whatever because it kind of kind of breaks the the um flow of things you know what i mean where you could just smash a button on your phone and it would switch the scenes it's a very cheap uh, economical way to get a you know stream automation thing happening you can also use touch portal which i think is free uh, you know, I'll put a link to that maybe then you can check that out, but you might want to use something other than the hotkeys unless if that's all you got, it'll work just fine. Um, so yeah, so that's streaming with, uh, AMD s software basically. So you don't have to download, learn anything. It's very basic. It's very simple. It will get you streaming with a, you know, your game and a camera microphone. You can do all that. You can do overlays. You can get the free account stream elements to do all, you know, custom alerts and stuff. Uh, you can have you know chat on screen. It's it's it just works very very well for basically it's free with every um, graphics card AMD makes. So let me just say this as we wrap up this video. I did try streaming with an RX 570 4 gig and an R3 1200 original Ryzen 3 1200 quad core CPU, and it did do it. It it did stream it. However. It wasn't great, and I did not have a camera or microphone or anything like that on there. So, if you would like to see me upgrade that uh, uh, that CPU, keep the RX 570, but upgrade to like a 1600 or a 2600, um, and add a camera and microphone to that base system to see how that performs, make sure you let me know in the comments below. Make sure you like this video. Um, so that uh, and I'll, I'll I'll create that content. I'll go out and get that CPU and create that content so we can find out together. You know if that is a viable option. So uh, make sure you know follow me on Twitter. Don't forget that I also stream here on YouTube every other Tuesday, and on Twitch Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can join the Discord, which is a great little growing community. If you want to follow up any questions or comments. I, I try to uh, reply to all the comments below, but if you want to have a more one-on-one -on -one dialogue, hit me up on Discord. I'm always over there. And until next time, you all, stay cool.